close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths, and then keep your attention with the breath, all the way in, all the way out. If long breathing starts feeling uncomfortable, you can make it shorter, make it shallower or deeper, heavier or lighter, faster or slower, whatever kind of breathing you want right now. See what feels best for the body. Make this your anchor here in the present moment. Because the mind needs an anchor, otherwise it just floats around all over the place. And sometimes it goes to nice places, and other places, other times it goes places that really make you suffer a lot. So you want to have some control over it. If you see it's heading off in the wrong direction, you've got a place to bring it back, right here at the breath. So develop this skill of being able to drop everything else and just stay with the breath. And as the breath is comfortable, then it's easier to stay here. When there is a sense of comfort, think of that comfort spreading around the body to soothe the body, all your frazzled nerves from overwork, and all your frazzled thoughts from thinking too much. Just let them get soothed as well as you stay here with the breath in the present moment. You need to do this as part of creating a refuge for yourself. We had the chant just now, taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. But what that basically means is we take them as our examples for how true happiness is found. And then we try to develop their qualities so that we can have a refuge inside. Because that there's another principle in the Buddhist teachings that you are your own mainstay. And you can depend on yourself, be your own mainstay, only when you develop the right qualities. During the course of the Range Retreat here, we've been talking about a list of ten qualities that the Buddha said, that you can make yourself a refuge. And they come down to two sorts, the way you deal with other people and the way you deal with yourself inside. Dealing with other people, the Buddha recommends that you try to find admirable friends, people whose behavior is a good example, whose attitudes are a good example. You try to stay with those friends, listen to what truths they have to tell you, what advice they have to give you. And if they tell you that you should try this, try that, then you're, you, try to, you give it a try. You show them some respect and you give it a try. You listen to what they have to say and you try to remember what they have to say. And then you try to help with whatever activities, good activities, they have. This way you, you're not creating any enemies outside. At the same time, you're taking advantage of the fact that there are people here in the world whose examples are good examples, and you want to follow them. That's in dealing with other people. Inside, the Buddha recommends that you develop five qualities. The first is virtue, like the precepts we took just now. Ways of avoiding harm by abstaining from certain kinds of actions. Then you develop the quality of persistence. In other words, you see anything unskillful coming up in your mind, i.e. anything that's going to harm you or harm yourself, harm others if you act on it, you try to let it go. As for qualities that are good for the mind, you try to give rise to them. That's persistence. Then there's contentment. Even though you may be trying hard to improve the mind as far as things outside go, whatever you've got, you learn how to be content with it and not spend all your time trying to improve your outside circumstances. Because you've got to focus on the mind as your important issue in life. And then finally, the qualities of mindfulness, learning how to keep things in mind and discernment. Learning to discern what's right and what's wrong, what's skillful and what's not skillful. If you can develop these qualities in the mind, okay, then you've got an inner refuge. And this way you've got these ten qualities, the five outside qualities and the five inside qualities, that create a sense of safety in your life. You try to surround yourself with people whose examples you can take, and if you can't surround yourself, at least find some person, somebody whose example is a good example. Stay with that person, learn from them, and then try to develop whatever good qualities that person has. Develop them in your own mind. What it comes down to is realizing that we live in a life where there is danger. Not only dangers from outside, but also dangers from our own greed, aversion, and delusion. You've got to do something to protect yourself. So you've got to create a refuge inside. So this comes down to the principle of not being heedless. You see that there's something that needs to be done, you've got the power to do it, you do it. If you see that there's a danger that has to be avoided, you do your best to avoid it. You try to develop the qualities that will protect you from those dangers, especially from your own greed, aversion, and delusion. The dangers from outside are nothing compared to the dangers that come from inside your mind. So focus on developing a refuge inside, and you'll be safe on both sides.